This is St Andrews, South Brisbane. Please turn to Genesis chapter 42 on page 45 of the Church Bibles. The scene opens with Jacob, also known as Israel, and 11 of his sons at home in Canaan. 22 years have passed since Joseph, another of Jacob's sons, had disappeared at the age of 17. The story had been that he had been devoured by a ferocious animal. That's what Jacob had been told. The reality was that Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery and he ended up in Egypt. We learnt in chapter 37 that Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than his other sons. That wasn't good and contributed to problems the family experienced down the line. The reason given for the favoritism was that Joseph had been born to Jacob in his old age. But we know of the brother's character flaws, and by comparison, Joseph's slate was clean. Could this also be a reason for Jacob thinking more of him than the others? Verse 1. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you just keep looking at each other? Mike Lee is a British filmmaker who made rather depressing kitchen sink dramas with titles such as Secrets and Lies, but depict remarkably dysfunctional families. I can't help thinking those words of Jacob would make a good opening line for a Mike Lee film, why do you just keep looking at each other? Okay, a contributing factor to the tension would have been that they were hungry. There was famine in Canaan as elsewhere. Verses 2 to 4. Jacob continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us, so that we may live and not die. Then ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. This is remarkable and, I think, revealing. Benjamin was Joseph's brother, meaning that they shared the same mother, Rachel. The other ten were Joseph and Benjamin's half-brothers. Same father, different mothers. This is the only reason the NIV study Bible gives for Jacob not sending Benjamin. Jacob did not want to lose Benjamin, the remaining son of his beloved Rachel. But I think there's more to it than that, and this is something we'll come back to. The ten brothers travel to Egypt, where they would have known Joseph had been taken as a slave. Would their consciences have been pricked by this memory? But when they end up before Joseph, they are none the wiser regarding who he was. He appeared as a 39-year-old, clean-shaven Egyptian governor, not a slave, and not a bearded Hebrew speaker as they were. He recognized them, but they 
didn't recognize him. They bowed down, and Joseph remembered his dreams about them. Chapter 37, verse 7. Your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. And verse 9. Eleven stars were bowing down to me. But something was different. There were only ten brothers before him, not eleven. And so the plot develops. Verses 19 and 20. Joseph says to the ten, If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison while the rest of you go and take grain back to your starving households. But you must bring your youngest brother to me, so that your words may be verified, and that you may not die. This they proceeded to do. If you are honest men. That's the $64,000 question. They claimed to be honest men in verse 11. But we know, and Joseph knew, that they'd been far from honest in the past. Had they changed? The NIV translates verse 20 as, so that your words may be verified. I think Joseph means, I'm going to find out if you are changed characters. Are you honest men now or not? And the test will be, do they return for the sake of Simeon, who is being kept as a hostage? Or do they abandon him, as they had abandoned Joseph 22 years before? The ten return to their father, Jacob, in Canaan. Verse 35. As they were emptying their sacks, there in each man's sack was his pouch of silver. When they and their father saw the money pouches, they were frightened. Let's cast our mind back. Twenty-two years previously, they'd returned minus a brother, Joseph. And there'd been the 20 shekels of silver they'd somehow come by. We know it was the price they sold Joseph for. What did Jacob think or suspect? Now they return minus a brother again, Simeon. And again, there's unexplained silver involved. This is getting to be more than a coincidence as far as Jacob is concerned. Verse 36. Their father Jacob said to them, You have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and now you want to take Benjamin. Everything is against me. Jacob hadn't sent Benjamin in verse 4, because he was afraid that harm might come to him. And why did Jacob fear that harm might come to Benjamin? Because of what had happened previously to Joseph when he'd been with his brothers. Did Jacob buy the brother's story about what had happened to Joseph? Increasingly, the jury was out. Chapter 42 is part of an ongoing story. We'll be looking at chapters 43 and 44 on the 10th of December and chapter 45 on the 17th of December. I hope you'll be back to find out how things pan out. Let's face it. Chapter 42 isn't a particularly good place to leave things, with Jacob facing the prospect of 
his grey head being brought down to the grave in sorrow. God is mentioned twice in the chapter. In verse 18, Joseph says, I fear God. In verse 28, the ten brothers say, What is this that God has done to us? The fact is, in our lives, we often don't have the full picture of what's going on. Sometimes, it's only looking back that we can begin to make sense of things. We're in a privileged position, reading of Joseph et al. We are told more than they know at any moment, and we can read ahead. But regardless, the message is, God is at work and working his purposes out. And God chooses to work with imperfect people, such as Jacob and Joseph's brothers, and you and me. Over the course of time, and it is quite an extended period, we see Jacob and Joseph's brothers being transformed into something more like the people God would have them be. And that transformation comes about in part as a result of things they have done wrong. They learn through their mistakes. When Joseph recognized his brothers bowing before him, he could have rushed forward to embrace them, revealing who he was. Or he could have condemned them, gaining vengeance for what they had done to him. Instead, Joseph chooses a course that will reveal whether they are the changed people he wants them to be. I hear talk of God's unconditional love, and I'm afraid, but I'm a little wary of what people mean by this. God loves us as we are, but still, he wants us to change to be more like him, more like Jesus. And this is an ongoing process. We may see Joseph returning his brother's silver as a gracious gesture, but still, there's more that has to happen before the family is reunited and reconciled. The brothers had come looking for rescue from famine, and they went back with their bags filled with grain. But there's also a need for them to be rescued from themselves, from their selfishness, but even extended as far as murderous intent. When in Perth in February, I hoped to meet up with a school friend I haven't seen in getting on for 30 years. I remember his telling me of a rock climbing accident years ago. He reached a point when he just could no longer cling on and he let go, fell and ended up with a broken leg. He's still got bits of metal in it, holding it together. But the point is, he described the letting go as a sort of relief. Yes, the landing was painful, but he was no longer in a state of paralysis on the rock face, unable to go anywhere, and rescue came. The brothers are in a process that will lead to what they have done in the past being revealed and forgiveness and restoration being achieved. This is often not an easy process, but it's worth it because the alternative is being stuck with guilt and sin. The Middle East of Joseph's day needed his storehouses of grain. The world of our day 
needs Jesus, of whom Joseph may be seen as an early prototype. And Jesus is able to provide a most precious commodity, forgiveness, through belief in him and his death on the cross. Joseph's brothers bowed before him in Egypt. Are you willing to bow before Jesus, accept his rule in your life, and accept the forgiveness only he can give? Amen. Die.